Hey, my name is Jonathan Ringer, and I'm here to talk about adding a Nixos service module. Um, today I'll be adding a module for OpenRGB. Um, I think I did a packaging video on this a long time ago, uh, when I was first, uh, when I was much younger of a project, but this just allows you to hold, um, to, to handle the RGB lighting within a computer in a nice open source fashion. You don't have to use proprietary software and it's really one of the only options that you have on linux to do something like this without having to do like a windows vm or booting into windows to initially set um, those devices so why does this need a service module um, for nixos well if you um i'm running this off of master because it was the 0 0.7 release just occurred 12 hours at the time of recording but um here if uh, if we launch this, then you will see the first issue, um, which is this. Uh, my user doesn't have access to the I2C um, devices, and so then I get this nice big warning that it's not able to see them, um, and then you can see that there's no devices listed here. This is circumvented by running it as root, so if I were to do sudo in the last command, if I can type, um, then you can see my devices fall in here and now I'm able to look at them. I'm able to then set the devices I was playing around with this earlier. It works fine as long as I run as sudo. But, um, of course this is an ideal one. It's privilege es escalation. Now I'm having some program run as root on my server. And then, uh, there's a few other things as well, uh, that would improve the experience, namely device support. So here we would also need to add a kernel module. And then uh, depending if I'm on, oh, sorry. This is the kernel module that needs to be added regardless so that there's the slash dev slash uh, I2C devices listed. And then also I would need to optionally add one of these two things um, as well. But uh, we can do this uh, in and nix those modules as well, and then we can just encodify that in like a nice typed way. The other thing as well is this uh, inclusion of a .rules file. Uh, so then if you have USB devices, which also have RGB, then they won't be listed unless you have this rules file, and then that will just further increase the discoverability of which devices can be controlled. Okay, so let's begin. Um, so I'm on Next Packages Master right now. Uh, let me just make sure that I'm still up to date. Okay. Um, and then when I'm starting from here is to create the module. I'm going to use Nix template for now. Actually, let me see. Let me build the latest. Okay. Because uh, there was some fixes that I made. Okay, so Nix template, but I can do a module. Here uh, I can do a p name. I'm going to do open uh, open RGB, and then I want it to be located at the Nixos. Um, okay, like that. Okay, so now if we're to do hard, hardware open hard open RGB, then we get this. Um, and from here. Um, Let's just uh, substitute these in, but let me first quickly go over the anatomy of a Nixos module. So up at the very top here, uh, this is going to be our inputs to the module. Uh, packages is going to be the entirety of the package set. So then if you are familiar with building stuff at the top level of Nix, this is everything that you would get from like here. So top level. So this is what we must think of like as the Nix packages set. Um, and then lib is just going to be the nix packages lib so uh, this is like the nix packages prelude uh, it just has like a lot of more flushed out functions of convenience for us to use uh, config is the most interesting part about nixos in general uh, you can think of config as uh, as if all of the configuration was already applied and i'm looking at the final state of the world and that is probably the most interesting aspect. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but uh, how Nixos module evaluation works is that we have all of the options. So here within this module that I'm going to be adding, I have this options section here, options.services.openRGB. 
Well, here, um, this open RGB will now have these options listed. So if I were to back out of here, open up Nix REPL again, and then if I were to load uh, Nix SOS, then these options, uh, let me not load it like that. Instead do Nix packages slash Nix SOS, like that, there we go. Then you get all these options. And so these are what you're familiar with if you've ever edited a configuration.nix. Um, but you know, you can you can poke around in here. Um, but how it works though is that the Nixos uh, module evaluation, it will kind of uh, accumulate all of these options into a flat listing of all of them. Um, and then it will try to do reconciliation of the final configuration. Um, and so then in here as well, uh, I can look at my system's final uh, configuration as well. Um, so then if I ever wanted to poke around in the values, I can do so in here. Um, so I can do like something like boot and then see what the kernel modules will be. And you can see like I'm running an AMD right now. I'm not sure why Intel's in there. Uh, but yeah. Um, okay. So uh, options. Okay, so options, uh, one thing too is that you almost always have an enable option. This is kind of more or less like a way to communicate to the, the module system whether or not uh, this is intended to be used. Uh, so what I mean by that is that if you have something like services.openssh.enable, then uh, other packages can then inspect that and say like, oh, I have a module that relates to SSH. Let me just make sure that SSH is enabled. Um, are like intended to be used. So this is how we communicate it here. Uh, the description here is just going to be um, something like uh, you don't do a period because it gets automatically added with this make enable option. Uh, one thing to note too is that a lot of these come from lib. So this like make enable option that comes from lib make option uh, these types. Uh, so Let me also load this. Okay, so this like lib.types, and then here's all the types here. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, one thing that you'll see too as a common paradigm is uh, adding a dot package to a service. This is particularly nice because some packages will have a lot of downstream dependencies. So the probably most uh, good example of this is something like systemd. So if you wanted to have a different system D try to monitor your services, but you didn't want to rebuild everything off of it because system D also has a lib udev, which is a dependence, like a transitive dependency for almost all of Nix packages. Uh, then you, what you could do is either do an overlay where you overwrite the system D with the one that you're experimenting with, um, but then you'll have to rebuild everything. Or you could just set that package and now it's, you're just modern, um, modifying that one service instead of your entire package set. And uh, so this, this is a nice little option where uh, people can do something like, oh, there's a dev release build of OpenRGB that solves my particular use case. Let me package that, try running the service with just only that difference, and then move on to the. So, okay. Um, moving on. Uh, we can do config uh, dot enable. So to conditionally enable something, um, let me back up. Sorry. So this configuration will be merged into this final state uh, configuration for other modules. Uh, so uh, what you're really doing here is you you're taking kind of like a view of the world before your module, and then you're trying to say what the end state of the world should be after your module. And for for our use case, uh, we'll just make the changes that I listed earlier, which was the kernel modules and then the rules, uh, the UDEV rules, um, and then also the service. And uh, that's just the only difference that we'll be uh, doing there. Uh, and then if you were in, let's say someone built another service on top of OpenRPG, then they, uh, RGB, sorry, uh, play too many games. Uh, but then they're able to look at all these configuration options and then also decide what to do and or affect it in other ways. 
Okay, so environment.system packages, yeah, we want to uh, add our package. So this will make it so that uh, OpenRGB will be on the path of all the users. So that's good. Uh, dbus, if a service that you're using also exposes a dbus, so for example, in the GNOME ecosystem right now, uh, they do a lot of dbus uh, usage uh, to communicate between programs and services. Uh, if that does have something, then you'll see something in the unit configuration saying like dbus bus name, I think is the option. And then they can expose something and then other services can look it up by that name. But uh, we don't want to use that. Uh, the one thing that we do want to do though is expose a dbus uh, package. Um, so the reason for this is uh, so that people get the like, USB options. So if we go in here and then we do the UDEV. Okay, so it's under services UDEV dot packages. Okay, so here's how we would um, add that. And you can see here, list of packages containing UDEV uh, rules, and then it automatically looks at certain paths. So it can be found in Etsy udev slash rules uh, dot d or lib udev. Um, and then if we remember earlier, open RGB. If we look, uh, there exports a Etsy udev rules dot d. So this, I just need to list this package and then it's able to find the, the udev file. So udev packages. So we just add my package there. Okay. Um, and then what this looks like for users is that when uh, they do a Nixos rebuild, then this folder here in Etsy udev rules.d, this will be populated with those items. So here right now you can see that there is no 60 um, open RGB, but uh, after we apply this module, we will see it be reflected there. Okay, so that looks good. I want to buy multi-user, yep, uh, after uh, we don't need networking, but we do open a port. Um, I don't think it really matters though, because we just need it after the loopback device. Uh, this port, oh, sorry. Uh, this daemon, I don't know if they actually mentioned the configuration here, but this daemon, uh, it, it will just bind locally. So here in the init, um, you can see here server and the server port. Uh, this port like is not going to bind to any of the interfaces besides loopback, so it's just going to be only local to your machine. I think it allows you to specify a IP port. Oh, whatever, whatever. Okay, um, so restart have changed. Service config, dynamic user, that looks fine. Package, open RGB. Uh, so one thing that we do want to do is pass the ones that uh, we will need. So server. Uh, and then we will also want to do a server port, um, but then we will need to expose that option. So. Okay, and then restart always. You need to do the, the server port option. And so in here, so let's just do um, port, this will be int, or no, there's a types port, uh, but the default will be what it expects here. So we can see default, it expects the default to be uh, 6742. So let's not change that. Default text.
Okay. And I think that's mostly good. Uh, we can test this. Uh, if you are not using Xflakes, then you should be able to test this by just doing something like sudo nixos rebuild i nix packages equals the present working directory um, and then something like switch as the action uh, but there's one more thing that we need to do first so uh, i added this file the openrgb.nix to the nix packages repository but if i were to do a nixos module evaluation right now the nixos modules actually don't know of this file it's just a loose file that happens to be in the uh, the directory but it's not referenced anywhere and so then what we want to do is um, there's a modules module list and in here this is a huge file now that I look at it of everything that is going to be kind of consumed when we do a Nixos module evaluation and so then here I did a hardware services hardware oh, open your PG would be here And this will take a little while, but, um, oh, and it looks like I'll be downloading a bunch of stuff and updating to essentially get master. Um, but it's already building stuff, so it shouldn't be too much longer. Never mind, has a build of Linux kernel. Okay, so I'll skip over this and uh, come back once it's done. Okay, and we're back. Um, after an impressively long time compiling video kernels and ZFS and a bunch of other crap, um, my computer's actually f free to be used again. So uh, after doing this, I realized that I was dumb. Um, I really needed to apply the options that we just enabled. So uh, need to go into here and then do something like services dot hardware dot uh, open RGB dot enable equals true uh, and then actually apply the switch um, services hardware does not services hardware and that is because we or I uh, didn't type that right. Does not exist. Interesting. Services. Dot, oh. And then it needs to be changed here as well. There we go. Okay. It looks like I did something bad. Uh, connect horse and integer to a string. Uh, fair. Oh, I see here. Okay. So this needs to be uh, two string. And we could probably add back this. Um, but one thing that we should notice here is rule 60. We actually have the open RGB rules that we had from before. So this serves as UDEV is being picked up, which is cool. And once it's done building the manual, then would be good. Uh, one thing to also note that is, I think also awesome is that we can see that the manual is being rebuilt here. So once this is done, um, copying from my build server, then we should see our changes reflected in main configuration.nix.
I really need to switch that pseudo vim Etsy nexus configuration. Distributed builds. It's false. Uh, for really small builds, this actually is kind of harmful. I'm not really sure why I killed that because now, now it's going to go back out to my build server because the next configuration is still pointing to that originally. Yeah, so you can see copying from. Okay, and I'm back. Um, we can see here that it was able to apply, um, and then we have one new open RGB service that's available to us. So now if we try to uh, connect, you can say we can see here that it says. Uh, I keep selecting the border. Attempt to connect to the local server, connect to the server, network listens, everything's great. Um, but one thing that we can see here is that we still don't have any devices, and this is not great. Um, uh, the reason for this being that if we were to open this as root again, uh, it still wouldn't be able to see it because it's now just connecting to the service, so there's no local server with, with escalated privileges. Um, but the reason why this is the case is that it's not able to actually read the devices that it needs to. So if we do an ls minus l on our dev here, um, uh, not that, no, not just those, these. You can see here that they're only accessible by root. Let me include the group here. Um, but they're only read-write for the root. And so uh, it's not able to actually read these things. Um, so it's not aware of them and yeah. Uh, but we can change this. Uh, we can either remove dynamic user um, and that should restart the systemd configuration and then we should be able to see it again because um, now it's effectively running as root. So open RGB. So now it's effectively running as root, uh, and now I can see all the devices again. Uh, but that's not that great. Um, from a hardening perspective, uh, just having services with uh, escalated privileges is, is not great. Uh, so one thing that we can also do too is uh, use systemd. Uh, I don't know why people hate on systemd so much, but they do allow you to have a lot of levers, uh, and some of those are great for things like hardening. So we can do this device policy, uh, and so we can allow specific devices as well as we can uh, close off uh, specific devices. So um, here we can do something like uh, close close everything except for the pseudo ones. Um, so we'll go with close there as the default policy. Okay, well, after a very long time of researching that issue, um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, it just seems to be looking at certain devices, which is not captured in the README. And so I get the warning and then that fails. Um, so for now, I think I am just going to run the server as just root and call it a day for now, um, just to move on. Um, Sometime later, maybe someone can come through and then improve that bit. But for now, I, I don't think it's a um, good time to benefit ratio since system CTL, like I still consider this better than the normal user launching their open RGB as root, but we'll see. Okay, um, moving on. We we can uh, go on with the additional compatibility. So the last thing that we really wanted to allow for users is the conditional adding of these uh, kernel modules. So if they have Intel motherboard, then they'll likely want this chipset, uh, and then for AMD, then they'll want uh, this one. So uh, we can add that as well. Uh, I did this locally, so here just locally I added it for myself. Oh, I added KVM Intel, even though that shouldn't be needed. Okay, um, but yeah, we, we can codify this into the actual configuration itself. Um, so we can just create another option here. So instead, we'll just be like, uh, open RGB dot uh, motherboard. 
And then we can make an option and then for type here, we can do something like Uh, I think it's null or types dot null or, and then we can make a list. So one of, or was it enum? I think it was enum. Types dot enum, and then we can make it out of AMD or Intel. Something like that. Um, and what this will allow is that it can either be null, uh, which means that they, they don't specify what it is, uh, or if they do specify a value, then we can do something according to the value which they supplied. So, default text. And then description uh, CPU family uh, additional additional alien. Okay. So down here, uh, we can do something like um, services.udev. Uh, when we look back at my configuration where I added this, so this is under a boot uh, dot uh, kernel modules. For those that are not familiar with how kernel modules work, uh, these are just added after your root file system gets added. So uh, as your system boots, it goes into five different stages, which is loosely reflected on the system V init process. But stage one is literally like the EFI entry, and uh, that will be your init RD or your initial RAM disk image. Uh, and so then that will just be used to mount your root file system. But after that, uh, these kernel modules will be loaded. So uh, here we can have it where we add to that list. So uh, boot dot kernel modules uh, equals, and then we can add a make if, and then we'll add uh, CFG dot motherboard. It's not equal to null. Uh, this is technically a list. Um, and then we will do I'll have to structure this. Um, this looks ugly, but whatever. Uh, optionals, uh, CFG download board, is equal to AMD. Uh, then we do This is just a string, so i to pc dot x uh, and if it's Intel then it was I eight oh one. Like that. So, okay, I think that's what I want. Um, we can test this out by going into this configuration, which I just closed for some reason. Let's get rid of the one I added here. Oh. So here we can actually do P2C dev uh, and something like that. Yeah, I think I think that would be good. Okay, so I don't need any I2C explicitly stated here. I just need this line. 
Okay, so let's try a rebuild. This description is supposed to have periods. Okay, so to check that this is taking effect, we could do LS mod uh, and grep I2C. Uh, this is going to be a little deceptive though, since I had both the dev and the PII already uh, loaded from before. Um, so then the other way that we can circumvent this is by opening up the next REPL, and we can actually import these packages slash source. And then we can look at our configuration. So um, why is this not evaluating? Options is there? Config is not. Services dot does not exist. Uh, right. Yes. Okay. So the reason here is that uh, this is coming from my channels, and my channels doesn't have my local changes to it. So what I would need to do here is something like that. Um, since I'm at the top level of Nix packages, if I import from the Nixos directory, which is essentially what I'm doing here, but not through the channels, but through my local changes, then this should be reflected. So yeah, now we get boot, kernel, modules, um, and then we should see the i2c. So we see i2c dev, um, and I didn't, configure my motherboard option. So let's take a uh, something like this. Uh, unfortunately my root user doesn't have any Vim settings set up, so it's a little jank. That's why there's a huge difference between my local user and root right now. Okay, um, and then motherboard equals EMT. Okay, open that up again. Kernel modules. Now we should see I2C dev and I2C PIIX. So that's uh, that's perfect. Rebuild again. Uh, we haven't changed too much since the last time we ran this, so if we do open up open our GB again, we should see that it's able to load all of our devices, and this looks a lot better of a user experience than what we had before. Uh, so, anyway, um, that's the basics of adding it. Uh, at this point, all that we would need to do now is just ship what we did and open it up as a PR to Nix packages. So we can just create a branch here and just do something like uh, open RGB module. Did I, I already did this uh, six months ago. So open RGB um, module two. <laughs> and then uh, let's add our Nixos directory here. And then I think we're mostly good. Uh, we just need to name it correctly. So if you're adding Nixos modules, generally we do a prefix of Nixos slash, uh, just to denote that we're not adding it to the Nix packages repository, but so this is going to be targeted at the Nixos ecosystem. So modules or tests. And uh, here specifically, we're going to do open RGB. And as part of this, uh, we're just going to do like init, init module. So that's it. Do the commit, push it up. Let me uh, do the correct remote. Open RGB module two. Okay. Let 
anybody here? We can do it where now this looks good. So Okay, I think that's mostly it. Um just to recap everything. Uh Excess modules. Uh I guess I didn't go I only did a brief introduction to them, but this is how you add uh, modules to the Nixus ecosystem. Um, and uh, the, the main benefit for us is that we can now fix assumptions that are made by software. So here, open RGB, uh, we can fulfill assumptions about the kernel modules that are being added, uh, the UDEV packages which need to be added for USB support. Um, and then we can also modify it so that uh, if they do enable this, then it's available for all users and then create the daemon correctly. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of a nice way to bridge the gap between Nix packages being a reproducible little islands of packages and software uh, to something that's more of a holistic system that actually integrates in a semi-impure fashion uh, with other packages. So. Uh, I hope you learned a lot. Uh, thank you for your time and see you around.